I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be making people laugh is a skill, a skill that you can acquire. I've got an email here from a viewer. He says, hey, Corey, I work at a very popular restaurant called McDonald's. I'm sure you've heard of it, LOL. I've heard of it a few times, also known as Mickey D's, the Golden Arches. They got the best french fries in the world, but I tell you what, 20 minutes after eating those things, I feel like fucking barfing, but man, they sure tasted good. So he says, anyways, there's this girl at my job that had a really high interest in me a couple of months ago. Her interest was so high that she took an early lunch around the time I got off my shift to talk to me. My anxiety kicked in and I tried to escape to my car, but she ran after me and I had no choice but to talk to her. I kept it short because I was running out of things to talk about. And see, the thing is, is that you're worried. That's the problem. It's like because you're nervous, you're feeling anxious. You go, oh, my God, what do I say next? What do I say next? And so you're not like really living in the moment. You're not going with the flow. So I encourage you to read my book because what I teach in there, the best thing that you can do, especially like when you feel nervous and overwhelmed with anxiety with a woman, you just start asking her questions about herself. I mean, if you like the girl and you're really fascinated by her and you're really attracted to her, I would think that you'd be interested in who she is and what she's all about. It shouldn't be too hard at all to come up with things that to ask her about or that you want to know about her. He says, after that, I have not pulled the trigger to continue where we left off, even when I had a lot of opportunities to do so. Sometimes I wouldn't even acknowledge her. I know that's rude, and I hate myself every time I think about it. He says, after reading your book, I tried to read her interest level, and I would have to guess it is below 51%. Yeah, if it's been several months and you didn't pull the trigger and she can tell that you're kind of anxious and nervous and you don't really know what to say or do, then she's going to realize, yeah, this guy doesn't understand how attraction works and he's not very successful with other women. And in when her mind all communicates, it'll going out with you would be just like going out with all the other weak, needy guys that she's gone out with in the past because let's face it 97 percent of the men that she's going to encounter in the world are like this they don't know how to interact with women to create attraction and women want to they want to go out with a guy that knows what he's fucking doing they want to know they want to interact with a guy that knows how to set a date that basically gently know knows how to gently lead her ultimately to seducing her in the bedroom that way they can sit back relax and get filled up by you emotionally spiritually mentally physically of course he says however when i sweep around her or near her she'll throw some receipt of paper on the ground for me to sweep up and she's already done this twice now but i didn't know what to say about it i don't really think that's anything that communicates attraction dude or that she's interested he says so her level might be over 51 percent and the next time i see her i will test her to know for sure that i might have a chance if it's below, then at least I know. At least I'm taking a step towards my desires, at least. He says, I faced my fears and a whole lot of positive outcomes. It all works in my favor. I was wondering how I can be funny and make not just her, but anyone laugh. Well, first thing I want to I want to say before I, I go into that is that you just need to ask her out. Just all you got to say to her is like, hey, why don't we get together sometime and meet up for a drink? When are you free this week? And just wait for her to respond. And if she's still interested, she'll say, um, I'm free Thursday, or I'm free Tuesday, or I'm free Sunday, or whatever day it happens to be. But if she's lost interest, she'll go, gee, I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you. And then you just go, all right, when you figure out, when you figure out your schedule, just give me a call. Let me know. That's all you got to do. And if she likes you, she'll, she'll reach out to you. She'll let you know when she's available because she likes you and she wants to see you. But if she's lost interest because you waited too long and she could tell that you basically didn't have the courage or the guts to go for it, then just move on to the next girl. And so when it comes to, oh, let me finish the, about the, the humor thing here. He's, he says, I'm one of those guys that has a dry sense of humor and sometimes I can make people laugh, but it's mostly when it's a reaction and it comes and then it goes. He says, I'm mostly funny when I'm under the influence of drugs or alcohol and I do not want to go down that road just to make people laugh. I agree. He says, is making people laugh a skill or is it something that you're born with? And it's something that you learn. It's a skill. Like for me, like my family, people were always joking around with one another. Even though it was emotionally fucked up and there was no affection, there were no I love yous, there was plenty of getting fucked with, being made fun of, I'll tell you that. And so when you grow up in a family, people are always teasing you and messing with you and being humorous with you. It's pretty easy to pick that stuff up. 
But as I got older, like especially like when I was in middle school and then through high school, and even to this day, when I get around people that I like, or I mean, sometimes I'll be watching a movie, or I'll, I'll be listening to somebody talk, and they'll say something. Oh, that's a great line. That that's a great way to say something. And it's like all these little clever anecdotes. Like if you've been watching my videos for a while, that I use like the indoor Olympics, or or like having sex with a girl and she's like really loose, like throwing up. Uh, it's, it's like uh, swinging a bat in a garage, throwing a tic tac to a whale, or throwing a hot dog down a hallway. I mean, shit like that. I mean, when you say things like that, if you're telling guys, are like, yeah, I was banging this girl, and like, I mean, she was so loose. It's like I could hear the wind blowing. I'm like, I could get my, I could get my knee in there. There's enough room. And, like you say, it's like just hearing things like that from other people around you. And you're like, that's pretty fucking funny. You should remember those things because next time you're in a situation, and you're telling a story, and you throw that stuff. Look at how. Because, I mean, you, if you watch my videos enough, I'm a, I talk in my videos just like I talk in real life with people. And I always say it with a shit-eating grin on my face like I've got right now. And I say things like that. And then because I've got so many, I mean, I literally got hundreds of those little anecdotes I've collected over the past four decades of my life. I've gotten good. I, I just It's good to be an observer and it's good to be a listener. And you said you're a little shy. And I used to be like that when I was younger. And so what I would do is I would just watch and I would observe the funny, cool people. I would see how they delivered things in a conversation. Notice how I use pauses, like I just did there. Things like that. That takes practice to use stuff, stuff like that in a conversation. So when you get around people who you think are really cool and are really funny and that make everybody laugh, look at their body language, look at their physiology, look at the movements, listen to the tone of their voice and how they're dropping certain comments in there. And it's like, so you can get good at throwing things in there that are like off the wall. Like I said, it's like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. It's like you say stuff like that to people about a girl is really loose. And well, most people laugh their ass off or, or using the indoor Olympics to talk about sex. Or like, like I, ha I had a, uh, a buddy of mine, we were growing up, his last name is Haley. And so like, we used to go, and he was always pretty good with, with women. And he's got a great fucking wife who's gorgeous, and they love each other. they got three beautiful children. And they have a pretty damn good relationship compared to all the other people that I went to school with. And one of the things that we he used to say when we'd go out and we'd, we'd drink together, he'd say, all chicks went Haley. And he would start talking to, he'd go up to a bunch of girls, and he'd say, hey, all chicks went Haley. And maybe girls that he, that he knew. Or he'd start talk, telling a story, and a girl would go, really? And he'd say, yeah, all chicks went Haley. You're like, hey, you know, he would say stuff like that. They would make people laugh. And so just being around cool, funny people like that, notice how they deliver jokes or how they throw in those little one liners or that dry sense of humor and learn to mimic it yourself. Look in the mirror or feel, even better, you can film yourself in a video camera as you're practicing using humor because it really is a learned skill. And so like, like all the time, like I'll use things like uh, like if I'm I'm walking out of a, a restaurant or I'm leaving a place, I'll I usually say things like, "Hey, thanks for the memories," or if I get into uh, a really long line somewhere, I'll go. I'm really, I'll usually turn to somebody. I'll, I say this all the time. I'll say, "I'm really fucking glad I got in the express line," and everybody laughs at that. I mean, just little stupid things like that that I've picked up over my life, and you, when you deliver it in a certain way with the right tone enough times you know pretty much the reaction that you're going to get from people. And so you throw it out there. People go, oh, you're funny as hell. It's like basically I just learned a lot of great little one-liners from people over my life, and I learned how they delivered them by watching and observing them and practicing it myself. And so when I'm around other people, they think I'm hilarious as hell, but I really just kind of learned this stuff over the course of my life by just practicing it. And that's all you got to do. So if you have a question that you want to ask me, go to my website, click the Contact Me tab, which will be at the top of your on uh, the left-hand side of your screen and send me one to two paragraphs max and just give me several days to get back to you with a response. If you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the products tab, which will be the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. If you want a digital version of my Kindle ebook, on my website underneath the email sign-up box is a box that has a link that will take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page. Once you get there, if you don't have a Kindle device, just download one of their free e-reader apps. And if you appreciate the value of the information I offer in these video newsletters, the articles on my website, and my ebook, you can show your appreciation by going to my website right now and on the Wibia toolbar, which will be at the bottom of your screen, 
click the PayPal donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information. And I will talk to you soon.